When he calls on me, I will answer him. I will deliver him and give him glory. I will grant him length of days. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns within the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Yes, dearly beloved in Christ, I, I greet you in the name of our Lord and Master, Jesus Christ, and I greet you as we continue to learn of the things he wants of us, especially as we prepare for Easter. Today is the first Sunday of Lent. We're celebrating the first Sunday of Lent. And this reflection is centered around the readings of the first Sunday of Lent, year A. Once again, my name is Reverend Father M.M. Omorin of the Catholic Diocese of Ikori Bene in Nigeria. Thank you for always keeping company. A few days ago, we celebrated Ash Wednesday, and the Lord told us we were on a campaign. I want to remind you of that. Please, we are still on this campaign. Today is the first Sunday of the campaign, and um, God is calling us again to continue better as we propagate the faith and help ourselves and help others to prepare well for Easter during this season of Lent. Dearly beloved in Christ, this life is full of challenges, difficulties, and many things that can make you easily get off the track. You know, it's not an easy road. We are traveling to heaven. Oh, many are the thorns on the way. It's not an easy road. But the Savior is with us. His presence gives us joy every day. It's not easy. There are people in this world who are looking for ways to push you off the track. And when they push you off the track, they'll be happy that they did it. And they begin to say, yes, I knew. Hey, we've done it. What I'm trying to say is, there's a lot of temptation. I think that is the word we should be talking about today. There is a lot of temptation in this world. And temptation is when a situation or a person deceives you and pushes away from the track and brings the tendency for you to fall. And eventually, if case is not taken, you fall and move off the track and you lose. Temptation has to be when somebody's intention is really to bring you down. It's different from a test. There are a lot of temptations in this world. If it's a test, like a teacher does in school, a teacher wants to see how his or her student would do well. It, he just wants to prove that this student listens to him or her in class. That's a test. But temptation from the one, the person tempting you wants to pull you down. He wants to find out, oh, uh, he's, he thinks he's strong, he thinks he's faithful, he thinks he's this and that, let me, uh, let me pull him down. And we have a lot of such situations. Therefore, my dear friends in Christ, in this world, we have the tempters and the tempted. I mean, if there's any English like that, the tempted. The many people who are tempted. We have the tempters and the tempted, in quotes. You know what I'm talking about. But there are a lot of the tempters. And some of us even, some of us who claim to be the tempted, also become tempters. There's a lot of temptation. So when we continue with the campaign of Lent, you see how wise the church has been by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. This very first Sunday of Lent, the church wants us to talk about temptation. And that's why the first reading is talking about temptation. The second reading reflects temptation. The gospel reading is also talking about temptation. We cannot avoid talking about temptation on this first Sunday of Lent. Let's look at the readings. The first reading is from 
the book of Genesis chapter 2 verses 7 to 9 and chapter 3 verses 1 to 7. And that reading is talking about the fall of our first parents. They were tempted and they fell. The psalm says, just the same psalm that we had last Wednesday when we had the Ash Wednesday celebration. Have mercy, O Lord, for we have sinned. And that's when, you know, the song I sang, No, no, it's not an easy road. No, no, it's not an easy road. But Jesus walks beside me and brightens the journey and lightens every heavy load. Have mercy, O Lord, for we have sinned. The only person that can help us out of this is God. And um, he needs to have mercy on us. So the psalm says, have mercy for we have sinned. Then you come to the second reading. The second reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Letter of Paul to, to the Romans. Chapter 5, verses 12 to 19. Romans chapter 5, verses 12 to 19. Where sin has abounded, grace has abounded all the more. And the aspect or context of sin we are talking about now is that of temptation. Where sin has abounded, grace also abounds. But it is in the gospel that you see a lot about temptation. Jesus was tempted the first time he was tempted to change stones to bread. And he said, no, I will fall. Thank God for our master. Man does not live by bread alone. As if that was not enough. The devil continued. Took him to the pinnacle. Jumped down. Just jumped down. And the tempter even quoted the scriptures. That God has kept people to take care of you. You wouldn't, you wouldn't be hurt. And Jesus looked at him and said. Hey, thou shalt not tempt the Lord your God. And again, you see. The, these tempters can be very daring. He went a third time. The tempter went a third time to Jesus. Took him to the mountain and told him. Look at all this. They belong to me. If you can just bow down and worship me. Can you imagine? Bow down and worship me. You. God will bow down and worship you. And I'm sure Jesus was offended at this time. And he said, be gone. Get away from here. But that was Jesus. That was Jesus. He was God. He was man. But he was also God. He had all the powers. And yet the tempter went. That was Jesus. He succeeded. Now you and I. Mere mortals, finite beings. The tempters are all around. The tempters want to spoil our own campaign. The tempters want to spoil our understanding and appreciation of Lent. The tempters want to take us away. The tempters won't come once. The tempter went to Jesus three times. The tempter may come to us even more than three times. And we need to do something here, dearly beloved in Christ. Let us understand what the Lord wants us to do during this Lent. I desire to share more of this reflection with you around the theme. Resist the gimmicks of the tempter. Resist the gimmicks of the tempter, dearly beloved in Christ. We must resist the gimmicks of the tempter. He's always there. The tempters are there. They want us, they just want us to fail. They want us to fall. They want us to sin. They want us to be in trouble. And if we are not, if we are not able to realize the fact that we are vulnerable, then we will only realize we're in trouble after we have fallen flat. Therefore, resist the gimmicks. Resist the gimmicks of the tempter. Dearly beloved in Christ. Let me talk about this. Let's talk about this. Um, let's look at what has happened in the first reading. So that we understand what it means. There is a psychology about temptation. In this world, there is a psychology about temptation. First of all, temptation begins with the distortion of the truth. Temptation begins with the distortion of divine law. Temptation begins with some misconception of the truth. And somebody comes. Look at Eve. Let's get back to the Garden of Eden. After God did all he did, and because he wanted things to be good, 
We are told the first day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day. After creation, God saw it was good. And after creating man, God saw it was very good. Very good. But immediately after the very good, things changed from very good to very bad. Man got into trouble. Now, one of the things that God did before he saw that it was very good was after creating man and creating other things and things were in place, he even planted a garden. The idea of planting a garden does not necessarily need to be seen physically or literally. It should be seen as, no, providence. God provided everything, provided comfort for the man. I wanted the man to be happy. Wanted the man to be happy. But God told him. Every place has rules and regulations. God told him. A simple thing. All the trees and fruit trees and everything in this garden, they are yours. You're free to eat. You're free to use them. They are yours. Except one. Excuse me. They'll be loved in Christ. Temptation. I want you to know this. Temptation begins with the distortion of the truth. Everything in this garden is yours except one. That tree, that fruit, in the middle of the garden. Whether you call it the, the tree of wisdom or you call it the tree of good and evil or the tree of life, whatever it is, that tree, that fruit tree, whatever it is, at the middle of the garden, please don't eat of that one. Go and read. God just said, do not eat. Do not eat of that one. Because on the day you eat, you will die. That was what, what God said. And now, the tempter came. The tempter in the first reading is, is, is um, identified as a serpent. Forget about the serpent. But they had to use the serpent. They have said he was a very corning animal. The tempter came. And began with the distortion of the truth. The tempter came to Eve. And look at the way the tempter is asking Eve. Remember the theme of this reflection is resist the gimmicks of the tempter. Resist all those, um, you know, he thinks he's smart. Resist. When was the beginning? When was the beginning? You know. In one platform that I belong to, I just woke up this morning and saw all these, um, you know, scammers. Uh, one person had come in and said, uh, if you put 50 naira, you will see 50,000 naira. All this trouble that, you know, people do on social media. When once you see those things, run away. Resist before you get into trouble. So. The theme is resist the gimmicks of the tempter. Now, the serpent came. And um, Eve also came, we are told. Look at how the serpent put the question to Eve. There's a way somebody will ask you a question, you know the person is trying to tempt you. Eve started by saying, did God really tell you not to eat of this tree? Sorry, not Eve, that is the serpent. The serpent asked Eve, did God really tell you not to eat of this tree? You see, when somebody, when somebody begins to ask you that kind of question, there is a question mark. Resist the gimmicks of these tempters. Why did the serpent not just say, why did the serpent not just ask Eve, did God tell you not to eat of this tree? Did God tell you not to eat? That would have been simple enough and direct. But because the serpent wanted to lure Eve to tempt her, to get her to fall, and the, and the serpent said, did God really why that advert? Did God really tell you? When somebody begins to ask another question, please be careful. There's a question mark. Resist the gimmicks of the tempter. And as soon as the devil said that, listen also to what Eve answered. Because when somebody tempts you, if you're not careful, before you know it, you will fall flat. And uh, if there's anything like no flat, you will fall more flat than the tempter. You will fall flatter than the tempter, whichever one is correct. You understand what I mean? Now, after the serpent has said did god really tell you not to eat listen to what eve is saying eve said yes so god told us not god told us we could eat of everything in the garden but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil we should not eat and should not even touch go and check again go and check your bible eve added something eve told lies there was a falsehood there. When in chapter 1 and 2, chapter 2, when God planted the garden and told them not to eat, God never said they should not touch. But because of the gimmicks of the tempter, Eve is already falling. And then when she's responding to the question, did God really tell you not to eat? 
She could have said the truth that God said, yes, don't eat. But listen to what Eve is saying now. He said, God told us not to eat and even said, we should not even touch. God never said that. God never said that. But that's what happens when you're tempted. That's what happens when somebody is tempting you. That's when, what happens when you fall to the gimmicks of the tempter. And then we are told, let, let's follow that story. Let's follow that story. The first reading of today, go, go and look at it again. From Genesis chapter 2, get into chapter 3. After Eve told that falsehood, blaming God and saying that God even told them not to touch when God never told them not to touch, the serpents implicitly, implicitly continued to convince Eve and said, don't mind God. Don't mind God. God really knew that any day you ate of that tree or you eat of that fruit, that you'd be as wise. So he was deceiving you. Dearly beloved in Christ, resist the gimmicks of the tempter. So the, the, the devil, the serpent, succeeded with its own gimmicks. And as soon as he did that, look at it's very sad. Very sad. The Bible has not told us that the serpent gave that fruit, whatever it is. The Bible has not told us that um, if we see it as fruit, that the serpent plucked it and gave to Eve. No. The Bible tells us after all the explanations, after all the gimmicks, after all the deceit, after all the distortion of the truth, after all the misconceptions, it was Eve who saw the fruit and said, ah, this is desirable. If it is so desirable to the eye, it will, be so, it will also be desirable to the mouth. And it was Eve. It was Eve that took it. The verb is the verb to take. There is no verb to give between serpent and Eve. Eve took. This is the danger when you give in to the gimmicks of the tempter. It was only after Eve had taken it. The next time you see Nathan, the verb Nathan, meaning to give. The next time you see the verb Nathan is when Eve gave to Adam. Dearly beloved in Christ, all the gimmicks of the tempter, we need to be aware. We need to be aware of the gimmicks of the fraudsters out there. We need to know of the gimmicks of the dubious men there. We need to know the, dubics, the, the gimmicks of the people who are going to put us into trouble. There's a lot of temptation in the world. Resist the gimmicks of the tempter. At the end of it, the devil went, the serpent went away. It was Eve that suffered it. And you see, the, the sin continued. She, she took it, but she also gave it to Adam. And from there, all of us are here. This is where we are, original sin. Daily beloved in Christ. There is no time. There is no time. There is a lot of temptation in the world. There is no need for you to think that you are too strong. All of us are vulnerable. All of us are vulnerable. You can fall. Therefore, be careful. Resist the temptation of the tempter. Resist the gimmicks of the tempter. Talk to your children about it. Let them know that it's slippery out there. When you begin to wait for somebody to brainwash you, to brainwash you at the end of it, you behave like Eve. You even begin to add some falsehood. God never told Eve, don't touch. But when Eve was reporting God to the serpent, Eve said, he even told us, if we touch, we will die. And the serpent said, hey, don't mind God. This God knows if you, talk, if you, if you ate it, you will know everything. And convinced Eve. Eve took it. And Eve gave it to others. Dearly beloved in Christ, if you are not careful, we will take all the nonsense from the tempters. And we will give so much to our people. If I'm tempted to fall, the tendency is for me to give that bad impression and bad situation to my children, to all those who are my subordinates, to my friends. Let's end here. Because we can talk, we can continue on and on and on. There, there, there is no time. Let's end here, but the message is clear. There's a lot out there to be careful about. Especially the gimmicks of the tempters. And God is telling us today to resist him. To resist him. Now, there is something called the occasion of sin. There is also the occasion of temptation. If you know where the tempter is, if you know where temptation can come from, forget about going to that place. Resist going there. Avoid that place. So during this um, season of Lent, just as our Lord and Master was tempted, we should expect to be tempted. You may be getting ready to fast. Temptation could come. And someone will tell you, why are you fasting? Who told you to fast? 
If you're getting ready to pray, temptation could come. Somebody can tell you it's only to pray. During this time, with all the difficulties, you may be getting ready to give arms. And somebody will tempt you. Resist those gimmicks. And go ahead with your campaign. Do the right thing. Avoid the occasions of sin. And remember to say the Lord's Prayer. Lead us not into temptation, but lead us out of evil. It is only the Lord that will take us away from temptation. Please, let us do our own part by resisting the gimmicks of the tempter. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord God, for your message once again. Thank you for this campaign for the time of Lent. We are disposed to follow you, Lord. And we know that it's slippery out there. Yet we believe that with you, we will land safely. Help us to avoid the gimmicks and resist the gimmicks of the tempter. Help us also to understand that um, we need to align with you for the grace to stay beyond the difficulties of the moment. In a very special way, we pray that this campaign will continually bring us renewal, bring us the grace of reconciliation with you and with man. We pray that you bless us and bless our campaign. And may your blessings, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, remain with your children during this season of Lent and beyond, now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you very much, dearly beloved in Christ. And um, once again, please subscribe to our channel, like it, and share it. And please, it's a campaign. It's a campaign. Go out there, and the message is resist the gimmicks of the tempter. God bless you.